Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of news and politics. And we they also they react to every video we come our way. And for this channel, now reality news now we they drop for a year. If today now the first time we be say they come across reality latest gist, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. To my returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you now for our massive support to this channel. I say may God bless all of you now all in Jesus' name. Amen. Make we watch this video below. Drop your opinion constructively for the comment section. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. Bye for now. Sadi Enterprise. In fact, the sea of woman endorsed it. As you all know. I'm very glad to come out this evening again to speak on issues that borders on public concern. I don't know if it is speculation, but I've been acquainted with the fact that one of the secessionist advocates in the Southwest have been arrested by in Kotonou by the government of the Republic. Whether that is a fact or not, I know the federal government is doing everything humanly possible to extradite such person back into Nigeria for proper prosecution. It is also true that Mazi Unandin Kanu is still under incarceration. What the guy is going through now under the DSS, nobody knows. Same yesterday, information trickly that armed bandits, a non-terrorist group in Nigeria, which the federal government have refused to label a terrorist group, now acquire techniques to bring down fighter jets of the federal government. I'm asking the Buhari administration a simple question. Are this set of people still armed bandits or a terrorist group? We have videos and pictures where armed bandits will be armed with AK-47. A sitting government of a state will be there giving coverage to armed bandits to address people. We are aware of a series of statements made by Gumi or whatever, whatever name they call him. To date, this person is roaming about in the street as free as every other citizen who choose to adhere strictly to the laws, ethical stable laws of the society. Till date, the federal government, under the tutelage of President Muhammad Buhari, is chasing shadows, whereas the real problem of our country is being shielded and protected. All because of the fact that these selected people may bring from a specific clan, while the others are not from that same clan. Injustice anywhere. It's a threat to justice everywhere. In those of us who are beneath, always say, Who call us what? What in a bay? A Or my reckon, I'm not going to be a year. If I be So, for those of us, I will not remove myself, who choose to play politics with everything. Lucky Dube once said, When the man with black coat, knock on your door, you will know that you are the next victim. People are dying on a daily basis. As we speak today, one useless media control organization in Nigeria called NCC is now prohibiting media houses from reporting the activities of armed bandits. As we speak today, 
If they tell you that they are defeating insurgency in the North East, they are lying. They have downplayed the activity by restricting the media from telling you what is really happening in the North East. But today, for some Nigerians to stand to say what is happening today is gross injustice. Everybody is busy playing politics because you have no lost member of your own family. You might be free in some parts of southern Nigeria, but if you are not aware, know it today, Nigeria is at war. Nigeria is at war. No matter the number of persons killed and slaughtered by this set of people, the federal government will not call them terrorists. They are still called armed bandits. But today, they now have the capacity to break down a fighter jet. The capacity is now in them to bring down a flying war, war jet, a fighter jet, a bombardier as well. We are talking about a fighter jet. This, this is not even an helicopter. A fighter jet that have a very high velocity. If a group of persons can stand on ground to either bring down such an aircraft with an anti sophisticated anti aircraft system, when you are not a government, those set of people is no longer armed bandit but a terrorist group. But it dates. The Buhari-led federal government have refused to blacklist this set of people to be terrorists. But instead, some disgruntled elements are celebrating the arrest of one man called Igbo or one man called Unandikanu. Now, somebody said, some, said something, say, and if I may ask, is Nigerian government not fighting Boko Haram and the bandits? But we've seen the killings of Boko Haram and the bandits. Bros, let's be factual. Look at the statements of those in government today. Look at their statement in the past. The killing of those terrorist groups, as we speak to me, is purely political. They are not doing that because they want to protect Nigerians. They want to secure their government. And those terrorists are saying, no, we need our own government. It is government that are terrorist war, not protection of citizens. I disagree. Now, Instead of the government to be focused and determined in their promises, they have refused to do what is right. Igo do me do, Igo Ogbede Oyo, please be very careful with your comments. This is my war. I don't block people, but I've observed you for some time now. I may block you, sir. Please. The last time you accused us of what accused of, of what we know nothing about. We managed ourselves. Please and please. You need to be extremely careful here. Please, thank you. Now, instead of the federal government. To consolidate on their existing campaign promises, which is one naira to one dollar, 45 naira per liter of PMS. Redevelopment of the oil refinery. Paying 5,000 5, naira to unemployed 
Nigerian youth. As we speak today, none of these promises have been achieved. Governor Chibukri Amechi, the then governor of River State, once said, if we cannot deliver, if we, if we get into government in the period of about four years, Nigerians should stone us. As we speak today, they have not received a single stone from anybody. As Siwaju Ahmedbola Tunubu said, vote if you want Nigeria to have light, vote at Jonathan. We will give you light. As we speak, the federal government of Nigeria has spent over $58 billion dollars. From 1999 to date in power, we don't have light. Since 1999 to date, over $58 billion, go and confirm. Do you know what is $58 billion? Why the Ukrainian, Ukrainian government were having some little problem within them during the time of Viktor Yanukovych, if I'm not mistaken, when he was ousted, there was a little conflict within that country before Russia took over Crimea. The government of Ukraine solicited for bailout from, from the United States of America. They requested just one billion dollars a whole economy they use that to liken that situation to 58 billion dollars under the obasanjoa administration olumelu report stated that the federal government of nigeria under buhari has under obasanjo spent 16 billion dollars in power and steel to today no lie The date, no light. Go to classrooms. It happens here in Benin. Oh, the secondary school will be primary school. Melu melu cow. Just students come up for class. They sit down and receive class. Cow. One idiot came out recently to say power must return to the north. That this is the number of people they have, the full and so and so 40 million, this one is this, that one is that, then they have so and so population. We ask a simple question. When last did you conduct a census in this country? When last did they conduct a census in this country to arrive at that number. Instead of them to be talking about how to ensure that Nigeria becomes an uhuru for everyone, they are busy fighting for power. As we speak, the northern population are the most impoverished population in this country. And they are fighting, dying over power. Now, armed bandits is shooting on a daily basis, killing people. Somebody said, somebody said that the government is really trying to flush out these bandits. What is difficult for a sincere government to labor bandits? Who now have the capacity to bring that plane, a fighter jet? What is difficult on the part of the federal government to call them a terrorist organization? In case you are not aware, IPOB, led by Unan Dikano, has been classified even before now as a terrorist group. Are we using 
two separate mechanisms in checking activities of those creating upheavals in our country. If IPOP can easily be labeled a terrorist organization without or seeing them with arms from the beginning, how come this set of people who now have the capacity to bring down fighter jets is still seen as armed bandits? How on earth will the federal government be sending them money, apologizing to them not to continue their activities? We all are in this country. We know what is going on. The federal government came out with a policy restricting the inflow of money from Western world into Nigeria. If you live in diaspora, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you cannot transfer money directly to this country again. Why? The federal government believes that Terrorist funds is getting to the country through the snakes. So they have to block it to avoid a situation where terrorists will not have access to more resources to unleash mayhem and terror on the people. The same federal government who blocks that money is busy giving them money in the country. Is that not a misplaced priority? Is that not a misplaced priority? This is a formidable question that we need to ask ourselves. Now, you block the inflow of resources, claiming that it is being used to fund terrorist activities. Fine, it has been blocked. People have to send dollar directly to you. You have a domiciliary account in your account like uh, reals and the rest, you can get, now get money dollar to dollar. But, those who block the process pays the bandits on a monthly basis for them to keep calm. Is that not a misplaced priority? This same set of people in the past called President Goodluck and Bello Jonathan clueless. As we speak, this is not only cluelessness, this is toughness. A government, a sitting president, that you will ask a simple question, he will be saying another thing. Instead of Nigerians to speak out, they are keeping calm. We are accepting everything. The youths, including myself, have destroyed this country. It is the truth. First, a man promise you one dollar to one naira. This is the highest increased dollar regime or international currency since the advent of Nigeria. Lagos state economy is bigger than Ghana. But as we speak, Nigeria cannot stand in terms of currency to compete with the Ghana cities. Big for nothing nation, we are to date. If you get to my area right now, we know many will get left. This is the only country where you can easily run into a transformer and hug it. Nothing will happen, you will hug it. Full electrified transformer, you go there and hug it. You can even snap on top of it. Because there will be no light. If you think I am lying, by tomorrow, I'm going to snap a picture on top of Transformer and send it to you on the media. I will do it. I'm going to snap a picture. I will hold a Transformer. I will lie on it. I'm going to do it. I will send it to you. You will see it on the media. It's not by bragging. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Because there is timing for light. They will tell you, we'll give you these three hours. The next three hours is for the other one. 
ada masa ya hai now let me state this clearly like in a do state the government of governor go in order say obaseki or any government in a do state does not have the right to bring electricity Even if you bring electricity, just the way we now have a functional OCMA power plant, you cannot send it to people's houses. BDC will sue the government. The state government does not have right to distribute electricity, except into government facilities. If a person can mistakenly say, I want to take OCMA into the street, they will sue government. But people don't know. People don't know what is going on. They will sue the government. The government cannot even give it to bank. The government, as we speak, cannot give electricity to banks and don't have the capacity to make this light available. Forget the Osiomo. We have Azura power plant here but there is no way state government can distribute electricity now let me tell you some theory ramification the federal government sits on top of power generation the federal government sits upon on top of power transmission which is the second phase of electricity electricity in the country in the country. The third one, the federal government ceded it to private sector with partial control, which is power distribution. Power distribution. If the state government choose to say, I want to bring electricity, believe me, they will be sued. The truth of the matter is simple. For Osioma power plant to bring light to my house or your house, the government must be ready to face a series of court cases from power distribution company. As we speak, we don't have much power generation in this country. Why countries are moving into nuclear power plants? Nigeria they built down. We are still building dams. Countries are developing solar energy. As we speak today, there is a community in a do state called Obayato. They don't use government light. They depend on solar. The whole community is 24 hours light in Obayato. But if a state government chooses to say, I want to bring solar to everywhere and I want to send it to people's houses. Eh. The state government should be ready to face litigation from these heavily rich power distribution companies. Now, let me open one secret. The last election that took place in the do, BDC funded a position against Obaseki. BDC. Because of the rancor, because you could recall that Obaseki walked out from Ken Oshinbudu from his office. He said, Obaseki said, and I quote, How can I tell my people that they have as they have no access to light when they know that light, power is here, light is here? I, I, did, I did not invite Funke here. She should leave my office. You could recall. Because of that fight, Funke sponsored opposition against Obaseki in the last election. Not be everything people they talk. But I just want to chip this in. Ask this question anyway for those who are deep in the political game. In fact, despite the fact that Trump, President Trump, made some errors in the United States, the way Trump emerged against the interest of the economic powerhouse in the United States, 
That is the same way Obaseki and Benji they do. If it was money, Obaseki they for remove her for office, not be joke. That is why to some of us, we spoke during the election. We did all we are supposed to do during the election. But those who truly deliver Governor Obaseki is are a dose in the diaspora. Quote me anywhere. Yes. A dose in the diaspora will call him brother and will call him sister. Umana vote in Obama Security and Great TV. If you don't vote for Obama Security, don't call me again. When these people go to, to the houses of electorate to campaign, they will tell them, my brother, my sister, say Obaseki don't win. Bo no call the girl. That was how, if not forget, in the governor's polling unit, I will not want to mention him. A billion based billionaire was sharing 50, 50,000 naira per vote. In the governor's polling unit, 50, 50,000 naira per vote. And don't be poor, ate the money and delivered the basket. They ate the money and delivered the basket. Please, for those who don't understand government, ask questions. Now, let me tell you again in terms of road. State government have the capacity to fix federal road, but they can't enter there. Even the same mode, they, they need an approval from the federal government to fix the federal roads in the state. We have Trump A Road, Trump B Road, Trump C Road in Nigeria. In the Western world, you have the Arteria Road. It's always, it's usually six lanes. It is called the Arteria Road. That is the road that leads traffic from state to state. If you go to Abuja, you see some of those lanes, six lanes. Kill year, kill year. We have close to it in Benin, like the Benin Lagos Road. That from the area of Uniben down. From, yes, within the Oshomole later fixed that road after getting an approval, the federal government returned that resources to him. That is, uh, it's supposed to, but our own is not up to the standard of what is called an arterial road. But we call it Trunk A Road in Nigeria. Then the Trunk B Road, it is called the Collector Road in the Western world. For those who understand the neighborhood concept, I was propounded by Clarence Perry in the 1920s in the United States of America. Where he stated that all streets will be surrounded by a local access road. So the collector road collects traffic from the arterial road into communities. Let me give you a classical example of such road. A Kenwa road. A K1 road. These are collector rules. And it is managed by states. It is a state government road in Nigeria. Then we have what we call the local access. These are roads that collect traffic from the arterial route, from the collector route. It leads traffic to individual houses. It is called streets. It is supposed to be managed and maintained by local governments. Then we have what we call the Q de Sac. The Q de Sac. But the point being made is very clear. Even if 
State government resources is true, is is falling. They do not have rights. That is the constitution we are having in Nigeria. A constitution, a document that limits development and progress in a country. Don't act because you hate anybody. Try to know the truth at all times. I only explain this for us to know that this is what ought to be done. Back to the topic of this course. Sorry to say this, I will not want to be pushed into monarchical issues in a dual state. The only time I try to express my opinion, the pressure too much. So, as I see Ed, for instance, I don't want to talk with you. I don't want to talk. People are calling me. Tell me what do you have to say. You are pressuring me to speak about the monarchical issues. But if you want progress in your states, think with your head. That is that. I have nothing to say in respect to that. Now, a government who is supposed to create positive development in the country have not been able to achieve just one campaign promise. Today they will begin to show you railway. The late president of Maru Musa Adua led administration in collaboration with President Gulag Ibele Jonathan, established this the standard gauge system. And you could recall that before the death of Umar Musa Yadua, one of his campaign promises was that Nigeria would become one of the 20th most world largest economy in 2020. And we became the largest economy, one of 20 most largest economy in the world. It was achieved. It was achieved. 20 most largest economy, one of the most 20 largest economy. One, what, are the, what, what was the, 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 the focus of the administration? It was tag the seven point agenda. Infrastructure, food security, rule of law, I can list them to the end, but because of my time, I just want to be laconic and direct to the point. The emergence of Adam Soshumule was because Yadua has already said rule of law must take place. Whoever wins an election should be given the election. We could recall that late Chief Anthony Akako Nemi said even if the Oedo vote or Shumule cannot be governed, they actually win the election. Obasanjo had to fly from Abuja to Benin to compare the Ahmed Chema to announce that Shumule lost the elections. But when Adua came in, he came out with the rule of law. That is why today we have both ruling party and opposition in Nigeria. But as we speak, the democracy is being swept under the carpet. We are gradually going back into a one-party system. Because Tunubu is desperate to become president. And I know that there's going to be a big fight. Because Buhari follower will never allow Tunubu to be president. Even Buhari will not allow Tunubu. They will not allow him. If Tunubu never make up, if you see him, you go no say re a Dioma. You go no say na re a Dioma. Not be joke. Tunubu cannot trek from a house for body long to the next bus terminal. You know fit. But he wants to be president at all costs. 
Not be joke. Then they make those people or they accommodate their own arranger. You go, the customer will be if you get one any money picture, we will catch out. If you see and you know that I see your man, we want to be president at all costs. And people are playing politics, very clear. The date in those state, people are yet to hear from the election injury. You go hear. Don't you have this one to say? One of the push me to this and make I can talk. Now as it come. What did you say make I talk? What did you say make I talk? And I told him, okay, the one way you know say I suppose talk where I not talk. Help me talk. As you campaign. Now so we campaign. The one way me not talk. May you go help me talk. This is a country that belongs to us all. The Buhari federal government is not sincere enough to fight bandits. They are not bandits, they are terrorists. But here in the Doe State and in the Doe South, and in the southern part of the country, it is the Tetans, the Jaws, and the Rivers people that have been able to distinguish themselves from the crowd. From those of us in the do and the rest, we never review. In Ninja Delta, people get ROPG. Their elders go see and go tell them, say, keep it, hide it, we hide it. Because those people are not using the ROPG or any of those weapons to find their brother. Then they wait the day when the federal government won't threat him. Don't tell them, say, we did. Now, only statement to Babi, uh, the tell say, if the North State and this is in God, but Babi will run. Federal government run, send delegation to another letter. They say all the leaders should come out to come and speak with Babi. Ijo, leader, come out. Ishakiri, leader, come out. Ishakiri, youth president, come out. As we speak, Bini no even come, no Bini president for youth. No SM president for youth. No affirmative president for youth. If at the end of the day, they come bring something, they come share that to their side. You're going to say, I have been marginalized. I have been marginalized. Whereas this boy has organized themselves into a voice. But we are here thinking of how to put down the next man. We are here Planning how to pull down the next man. No leader. Who will represent you? One do national confer. If governor never select people in one group, we know fit a repetitive. We want to do this one. If they never select it, you know, and you are happy. <laughs> you are happy. When we go tell no, say with a mistake. I pray may never too late. Everybody they do I too know. I too sabi. Na me. Oma na eme ona. If we must achieve success, we must first of all learn to be humble. Let's recognize somebody say, no, this is our leader. Across party divide. I want to round up now by telling you this. Since when you tell you, yes, full and full and full and how many big adult citizens don't ever come and condemn their action? Check. Now, the poor people, they say, hey, I feel like they No! The old car away, they see with full and now adult people get her. Adult people, now get those cow. Now, full and they get them. Now your big big people now get cow. Full and is only guiding it. So no matter you cry a rich, they will not see anything. All the full and and the rest of the pursue come up for the other states. They don't come and do.
more rest. I beg, let me cut this discussion here for now. Thank you very much. It's me, your brother, your friend. Come to Sahwinokwudi. Get yourself prepared. Some group of persons want to create ethnic cleansing. But you never know. Ethnic cleansing has started. Ethnic cleansing has started already. They are taking over your lands. Turkey was a secular state, but today it's an Islamic state. The Saraki town, tell me the name of that town, the other state. Now Yoruba Mischo, with populated Yoruba. But the enemy idea, na fulani. I don't know where they go. This government hates enlightened people. Kwara State, thank you. The 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 enemy is a fulani man. This government don't like enlightened people. I can only tell you, lead you. Open your eye. Even if your brother politics get issue for your town. We are in Nigeria. Open your eye. Up. Don't let them knock on your door before you stand to defend yourself. If Abdullahi pass police station with Stabinev, they don't arrest him. If you say hold the pass with Stabinev, they don't only arrest me, they incarcerate me. They know, I know see some. That's to tell you that in this country, you are a second class citizen. We have two different types of economy in Nigeria the northern economy and the southern economy. If, if picnic is sold 130 naira in the north, here it will be 200. They have northern economy. And the Nigerian economy. You and I in the Nigerian economy with the shots. Till today, they enter more to 20 naira for not. I don't get gele gele. River that I get ports. But the federal government is building dry ports in an area where no water for Kaduna. A president that came out to tell the United Nations, say concentrate everything on the north in the north. You know, see the Mona, no, no, no. Mona, they play politics for us. Mokuna know you net on a safe. As a people to stand to confront these people. If you're not doing very soon, you will knock to enter your own house. A government comes out and say, Yes, UNDP, concentrate all these things. In the north, Gele Gele Seaport, which is supposed to be a joint project with the federal government and state, Okbari. Data get up, Okbari, but the federal government is building a dry port in Kaduna. We are no water. They go from Lagos, carry the goose food, they'll go drop and then they'll say the clearer. They bar foreign rice into the country. All the border for the North go to rise the enter. Rise the enter. And they say they bar foreign rice. They bar foreign rice for you. The rice is in Lagos and in the North. It's not in the East and the South South. Don't be deceived. Thank you. What's up with